Okay, so the very, very last section is nucleic acids for this chapter. So we've done proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and now we're to nucleic acids. So as we're going through this, remember to think about that chart that we filled out in class, be thinking about monomers, polymers, bonding, and jobs. Okay? I don't love the way that your chapter talks about nucleic acids, so I'm just going to kind of go through their job and their structure, and we're going to be done. Um, so an amino, I'm sorry, a nucleic acid is DNA. That's, you guys can make that association in your head. It's a lot more than that. It's very complicated, but nucleic acids are DNA. They are your genetics. They are what pass on your information inside your cell. So if you're ever talking about a gene, the chemical basis of that gene is nucleic acids. Um, and the monomers of nucleic acids are called nucleotides. Um, and we have two different types of nucleic acids. There are DNA and RNA. You probably already knew that. Um, DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. RNA is ribonucleic acid. Um, at the end, I'll talk about the three differences between DNA and RNA. Um, but DNA contains information for all of life, all of it. It's different in every living thing, but all of the DNA inside of your cells, all the DNA inside of one of your cells, has all of the information to do everything that your body will ever, ever need to do, ever. So um, that means that it also contains the information for its own replication. So if we didn't replicate our DNA, we would never be able to make new cells, reproduce, um, or there would be one generation. So it's important that DNA contains the information for its own replication because that way it says like, okay, I'm going to make the proteins that I need to make to replicate. So that's a really important step. Um, and then what happens is the way that DNA does its job, because DNA itself can't go out and um, catalyze a reaction. It can't make your muscles move. It can't store things. So it needs proteins to do that. So what it actually does is it contains the information to make every single protein your body's ever going to make. And what it does is it goes, it starts off as DNA inside the nucleus, and then it changes into mRNA. Then that mRNA leaves the nucleus, goes into the cytoplasm, and then a protein gets made from the mRNA at the ribosome. So we call that the central dogma of molecular biology. And you're going to know how every single one of those steps happens in a couple of chapters. But for now, just understand that DNA gets made into RNA, gets made into a protein. Now, flash back to proteins, we can see here our polypeptide chain, which is many amino acids in a row. That's the polymer. The monomer are amino acids. So here are the monomers. They're getting attached by the ribosome to turn into a polymer. Um, so let's talk about the structure of amino acids. So amino acids, I'm sorry, structure of nucleic acids. So the, the monomer of nucleic acids is a nucleotide. This is a nucleotide right here. It's made up of three parts. A phosphate group. We've seen phosphate groups before. A five-carbon sugar and a nitrogenous base. So this five carbon sugar is, has five carbons, obviously, and we number them. That's really important. In any molecule, we talked about this a little bit with carbohydrates, but we number the carbons because they have different things attached to them, and then we can talk about what each of the carbons is doing. So this is a five carbon sugar, and we call them, we number each carbon according to um, the number of the order it goes in, and we call them prime. So this is the one prime carbon. That little dash right there means prime. It's one prime carbon, two prime carbon. 3 prime carbon, 4 prime carbon, 5 prime carbon. So we will use those to refer to things. So that is the 5 carbon sugar right there. And then our nitrogenous base um, is kind of like the R group of amino acids. So remember in amino acids, there were four things bonded to a carbon. Each of them had an um, amino group, a carboxyl, a carboxyl group, a hydrogen, and then that last group, the R group, was different on every one. That's what it's like here with nucleic acids in nucleotides. However, our, nitro, um, our R group, our nitrogenous base, there's only four. Five. Sorry, there's five. So instead of there being 20 amino acids, there's five nucleotides. And those four things are cytosine, thymine, uracil, adenine, and guanine. You probably remember these from regular biology two years ago. Okay, so eat any one of these five things could be replaced right there to make our nucleotide. So again, you don't need to know much about the phosphate group. That's just what it is. Um, the five carbon sugar, it's made up of five carbons, we number them with primes. 
and the nit nitrogenous base there's five of them betazine, thymine, uracil, adenine, and guanine. So quickly, I want to talk more about the sugar. So this sugar um, is what makes the difference between DNA, one of the differences between DNA and RNA. DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose, which we have right here. You can see it. Um, the sugar for, ri for ribonucleic acid is ribose. I understand my face is covering that right now. Um, it's covering it it's still here. But here is um, ribose. So you can see deoxyribose has five carbons, one, one, two, three, four, five. And attached to the two prime carbon right here, there's an H. Now, in ribose over here, I know you can't see it, but this picture is on page 87 in your textbook. Um, instead of an H right here, there's an OH. So ribose has one extra O, and that's what makes the difference. And it also makes sense because deoxyribose has been deoxygenated, there's one less oxygen. So instead of there being an H right here, there's an OH in ribose. So that is one of the big differences between DNA and RNA. And that's what you need to know about the sugars. Five carbons, deoxyribose has an H, ribose has an OH. And the sugars are attached to the phosphate group and to the nitrogenous base. Now, like I said, there's five different kinds of nitrogenous bases, or five different nitrogenous bases. But really, there are two main types of nitrogenous bases. If you look over here, here's the nitrogenous bases, these yellow things again. The green things in the middle are the five carbon sugars, and the little yellow circles are the phosphates. Okay? So there's two different kinds of nitrogenous bases. See, some of them have one ring, some of them have two. The ones that have two rings are called purines. They are right here. Those are adenine and guanine. You don't, really, you don't need to know the difference, the chemical difference between the two of those. But you do need to know that adenine and guanine are purines, and they have two rings. One is five carbons, one is six carbons. Okay? Um, two rings. Whereas pyrimidines are these guys right here, thiazine, thymine, and uracil. They only have one ring. Again, you don't need to know the difference um, between the three, but you do need to know they have one six-carbon ring. Okay? That's all you need to know about these three different components. So now let's talk about how they bond together. Okay, so you can see this is a polymer right here. There are many amino, many nucleic acids bonded together. We have phosphate, sugar, base. That's one. Phosphate, sugar, base. That's another. Okay, so you can see that they are attached between the phosphate group and the three prime carbon of the next nucleotide. Okay, so the phosphate group of one lines up next to the three prime carbon of another, and a bond is formed. This type of bond is a phosphodiester bond. You'll see that on a coming slide if you want to write that down. Phosphodiester bond, and that is between a phosphate group and a three prime carbon of another um, nucleotide. And so what we get when all these bonds are made is what we call the sugar phosphate backbone. Because since the bonds are between the sugars and the phosphates, you get this big long chain of sugar phosphate sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, okay? So that is part of the big structure of DNA, is the sugar phosphate backbone. And it has directionality because of the fact that the phosphate is always bonded to the three prime carbon. So we will always talk about nucleic acids, and we'll talk about the three prime end and the five prime end. So down here is the three prime end because the three prime carbon is closer to us, up here is the five prime end because the five prime carbon is closer. So we will, when we talk about DNA replication in a couple chapters, that will be very important. But for now, just know that it goes um, phosphate to three prime carbon, and that is happened by a phosphodiester bond. It doesn't say the kind of bonding. Okay, phosphodiester bond. So, again, adjacent nucleotides are joined by covalent bonds. Phosphodiester bonds are covalent bonds. Remember that big circle we drew in class with um, covalent bonds, and inside there was a circle that said peptide, phosphodiester, ester, and glycosidic. Okay? So phosphodiester bonds are a type of covalent bond, and they happen between the OH group and the three prime carbon of one nucleotide and the phosphate that's attached to the five prime carbon of another. And so we get this big, long backbone, like I showed you, and the nitrogenous bases are sticking off. 
And this leaves the nitrogen spaces to interact with other nitrogenous spaces. Um, and when, when, when that happens, we get a double-stranded DNA. So here's my sugar phosphate backbone. And I have all my nitrogen spaces in the middle. And then they form together. You probably remember that DNA is double-stranded, and that's why. Um, because the two nitrogen spaces, they attach to each other. A goes with T, C goes with G. You probably remember that. Um, but the two strands are running anti-parallel to each other. So remember how I just said that they had directionality. So one is going this way, and this would be, say this is five prime because I have five fingers, and this is three prime. The other one's going to go this way. Five prime down here next to three prime. They're anti-parallel. Um, oh, here we go. So we can see it. So here's one DNA strand. This blue part is the sugar phosphate backbone. And in the middle are our nitrogenous bases. They're attached to a second uh, DNA strand with the sugar phosphate backbone and the nitrogen spaces in the middle. The base pairs in the middle are held together by hydrogen bonding. So that's not phosphodiester. Phosphodiester is only in the backbone. But um, the two middle, the bases in the middle are held together by hydrogen bonding. Okay. I think that that is all you need to know. Um, so make sure you know the monomers and the polymers. Monomers are amino acids, nucleic acids, I'm sorry, let me start that sentence over. Monomers are nucleotides, polymers are polynucleotides or DNA or RNA, whatever you want to say. The bonding is phosphodiester that makes up the big long polymers. Now, there's also hydrogen bonding in DNA, but that's not what holds the, the monomers of the nucleic acids together. So, just phosphodiester bonding. And their job, their function, is to store genetic information. Um, each nucleotide is made up of three parts, which is protein, not protein, phosphate, five carbon sugar, and nitrogenous base. There's two different kinds of five carbon sugars, ribose and deoxyribose. And there's five different kinds of bases, adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosyl, and uracil. Um, Adenine and guanine are purines. Cytosine, thymine, and uracil are pyrimidines. And there's three main differences between DNA and RNA. I don't know if I said this, but I'm going to say them now. One, DNA is double-stranded like we talked about right here. RNA is single-stranded. If you flip back to this picture, DNA is double-stranded, RNA is single-stranded. Two, DNA has ribose. DNA is deoxyribose. RNA has ribose. And three, DNA has thymine, and instead of that on RNA, RNA has uracil. So that is what you need to know about nucleic acids.